Hey friends, Brad Hussey here with the Art, Business and Craft of Web Design and today we're going to be learning about wireframing, what it is, why it is, and how it is. That was a bad intro. Let's try it again. Hey friends, what's up? Brad Hussey here with the Art, Business and Craft of Web Design and today we're going to be learning about wireframing, the very first step in your web design process and why all you really need to start is that. I really nailed that. I was thinking that I wouldn't get that on the first try. That's wireframe. All right, and welcome back. First thing you're gonna notice is that the whole scene changed. Lighting changed, my outfit changed, continuity for the win. Anyway, okay, so wireframing in its essence is the very first stage of your web design process. Now think about it like this. When you are building a house or when you have somebody build a house, they probably don't just show up at your house with a bunch of two by fours and some screws and tools and then just start winging it. Wing, that would be a little sketchy and probably not up to code. No pun intended there. Same thing goes for your process as a web designer when you're especially when you're building projects for clients or say a team or you know you're you're working collaboratively you probably want to start really simple and blueprint out what the site's going to be and that's the purpose of a wireframe it's boxes and lines it's not pretty it's scrappy and the whole point of it is to just quickly get ideas out on a piece of paper or using a tool so that you can know what the layout of your site is going to look like, where the content is going to go. Quickly iterate on ideas. Why The reason why wireframing is so nice is that you could wire up a design in a matter of seconds and then do another one and then do another one and do another one. So let's say you're doing a home page or a sales page for say a course or a product. Well, you can just quickly start sketching, you know, your first idea then go for another one. Try something weird. Try something wacky. Try something crazy. So what is wireframing? Wireframing is the very early stage of your web design process. Now, in previous videos, we talked about coming up with the goal of your website, purpose of your website, coming up with a site map. Now, the wireframe is kind of the next step in that really early stage of your web design process, the planning stage. But this is where you start to get to see what the website might look like in terms of its layout and structure. Now the wireframe is not your design. It's not what your final copy is going to look like. It's simply layouts, boxes and lines, really scrappy so that you can iterate and come up with different uh, different layouts quickly. Uh, there are a couple terms that you might want to know. So wireframing, that's the, the whole, the main point. You're, it's like literally framing with wires. Lo-fi is like low fidelity, just real scrappy, just doing notes, piece of paper on your iPad, whatever. Hi-fi or high fidelity is when you use a tool like Figma, Sketch, Adobe XD, you know, whatever. There's a bunch of tools that you can use that are more presentable that you might wanna to give to a client. Now, why would you wireframe? Well, it's an easy and scrappy way of getting ideas out on a piece of paper. So if you're coming up with an idea for a homepage or a landing page or a sales page for a product or a course, then you could just come up with your first idea. You just sketch it out and go, okay, let's try another one. Let's try another one, come up with five, 10, 15 ideas in a matter of a minute. And then from there, you could start getting feedback. You could start iterating and you could start mix and matching between your wireframes and finding out what do you like, what works, and how can you come up with a unique, uh, but also impactful and meaningful layout. It's also important to know that the wireframing, the point of a wireframe is meant to be scrappy. It's meant to be boxes and lines. It's meant to look like a sketch. It's meant to look really plain and basic with no colors, no font choices, no branding, just literally agnostic of all of that. Why? When you're working with a client and you present something to them like a wireframe and it's got a color choice, let's say like a blue button and you didn't think anything of it, your client might go, um, our brand isn't blue. That's our competitor's brand. You clearly don't understand the problem we're trying to solve here. Wireframe is boxes and lines, not indicative of the final product. It's meant to be, oh, I see how that works. So that's why you'd wireframe. Um, and also to share ideas, get early feedback. Now, if you're doing your own sites, you probably don't need to 
sketch and then bring it into a tool and make it polished and pretty. That's mainly for if you're working with clients who you want to present something to in like a meeting to get feedback or sign off or with a team you're collaborating. That's when you'd want to use more of a high fidelity process. You don't need to open up like Figma and start wireframing out your you know, your sales page or your blogs. And that's up to you. You could do the whole thing if you like the whole process. But if you're working just for yourself, building your own things, you might want to skip the high fidelity process or stage. Uh, now, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to wireframe up a sales page, like a typical sales page to sell, let's say, a course. Now, you could replace it with a product or a service, but um, because I also sell courses, you know, course sales pages are often on my mind. How do you structure them? How do you make them different? So we're actually going to wireframe up a course sales page right here on the video. So let's do that. All right, so let's say we want to come up with a couple ideas for a sales page, a one page sales page for course. So uh, I'm just going to draw a, a pen would be nice. That would be a nicer pen. Just a couple screens here. Now let's say up here, we got like a hero section with like the logo up here, no navigation, just keep it really simple. And just like a really epic headline and like one of those down arrows and then maybe some text, a little video, another section down here that's below the fold. Uh, so it's pretty basic, you know, sales page idea. Now I could come up with another one here. Let's just say we start with like oh, a video, like a video sales letter style. And it kind of cuts across the background here, logo up there, video, and then epic headline and subheadline that ends that section, maybe down here, some more content and we'll get to that. So that's below the, that's the, the rest of the page there. Another idea product image, image of like the course, text, okay, and then heading, maybe here we do that video again. This is basically how you'd come up with some ideas for your wireframe. None of these are like huge winners, but the whole point of this is to come up with something that is scrappy and easy to understand what's happening. So let's say out of this, you know, I really like this one right here. So let's develop on that a bit. But maybe what I also like is, you know, I, I like the, the video on this one. I like this. I don't like this one. Logo. And maybe we have like a buy now button. If you're ready to buy. And then right here we have epic headline, subheadline, and then button. Okay, and then from there, below the fold, so this just means like there's more below, there's gonna be a video here. If I like this, okay, then what I wanna do is add some more, running out of pages here, there we go. This is why people like using iPads and stuff because you don't have to work with a bunch of paper, but it looks like I've got a lot of space here. So let's say I wanna develop on an idea This is kind of how you come up with this, you know, a basic wireframe. So now what I want to do, take this over to the iPad and uh, develop on it a little bit further. All right, so here we are in the iPad. I'm using an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil. If you'd like to use the same setup, go ahead and drop about one to two grand on the Apple Store and you'll be good to go. If you don't want to do that, that's totally fine. You can use your piece of paper or, or like a notebook or your computer, but I'm going to be using the iPad here just to show you another variation of, of lo-fi wireframes. I like using the iPad because it's fun. And when you spend a lot of money on a piece of tech, you probably should use it. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm using a tool called Concepts or it's an app called Concepts. It's free. There's a paid version. Free should do the trick. It lets you sketch. It has an endless canvas, meaning like you can move the canvas and go anywhere you want, you know, to play around with the canvas. So that's why I like Concepts. You can use Procreate, the Notes app. Uh, there's probably lots of other wireframing tools out there as well, sketching tools. So here we go.
All right, so what you can see here is I've just kind of sketched a couple ideas here. These little scrappy lines on the bottom here, uh, the squiggly lines and the arrows, it just shows that these. this is one continuous page. I could have just drawn a really long page, but just to keep it all in one visual format, I just did it this way. This is just the way I do it. You know, you could do it lots of different ways. I just don't like looking at like a 10 foot long sketch. So I just kind of do it like that. It just shows that it's like a ripped piece of paper. I'm putting it beside it, putting it beside it, but they all connect in a linear vertical fashion. So I'm going to see here, the, what I'm trying to go for is like a primary headline at the top here, and then you could uh, like a video sales letter, and then below that kind of like your unique selling proposition, and then buy. So for people who are ready to buy, they're ready to buy. And then about the course, some FAQ, answering common questions, join the course, two different options, a $50 or $250, well, I mean, two different price points with different value. And then at the end, maybe like a final call to action to join, or if you wanted to do something like, um, if you're not ready to join now, put your name on the wait list or watch our free workshop, enter your email, something like that. That's kind of one way you could do it. Now, what you might wanna do is like, say this is version 1.0, and what if you did like a version 2.0? So, so this is version 1.0 right there. Version 2.0, if you wanted to do something kind of crazier, you wanted to play around with a different idea, then you could do that. You could start sketching new ideas here, you know. Play around, get scrappy, come up with some ideas and see what works and then keep doing this. This only takes a few minutes to discover and to play around, to take notes, to sketch, look at different websites, come up with different ideas, see if you can come up with something innovative, look at proven formulas and formats, but then also try and create something unique and original. You know, follow the formulas and the structures that work for different pages and templates, but then, you know, think about how can I do this differently? And so this is what I like to do, and this is using the iPad. Now let's switch over to my computer screen, and I'll just show you one last tool that you can use to create some more high fidelity high fidelity wireframes uh, for your projects. Let's do that. All right, so here we are in my screen. This tool is called envisionapp.com. I love using Envision App. There are also other tools like Figma, which is another really popular tool used by um, UX and UI designers and web designers alike. And, and another one that you might use is Adobe XD. Adobe XD and Figma are kind of like the same tool. They have their own uh, pros and cons. I won't get into that but you know, they're meant for designing you know, uh, sites and wireframes and user experiences. And so you can start from scratch or you can use a pre-designed set of templates and components to create your more high fidelity wireframes. Now, if you're wanting to use more low fidelity wireframes on your computer rather than the iPad or your, or your notebook, then Envision app is, in my opinion, the way to go. It's, uh, it's a nice way of, you can prototype in this as well. You can do high fidelity wireframes, but I like doing freehand, um, wireframes here in Envision app. And it's this is what I use actually to build and to wireframe and plan out my uh, website that I built last year, which is called marketinghonestly.com. So here's the site, you can kind of see it does actually mimic pretty closely this homepage wireframe here. So obviously some things are different, you know, like the headline and such, but the layout's the same, the logo, the nav, the primary headline and the call to action. Here it is, logo, nav, headline, primary call to action. And then the swoopy line, we got the guides or like kind of the secondary call to action where to get started on the site. And then at the bottom we have the, we have the, uh, you know, the secondary or tertiary call to action that's here in, in the bottom of this wireframe right here. So, you know, that's how I like to wireframe specifically lo-fi wireframes. I'll either use the, the notebook and then switch over to the iPad or the desktop and I'll just use Envision app. A little note on using tools, if you feel like you need to go off and master Adobe XD or Figma in order to start wireframing, don't fall for that, that's a huge waste of time. Yes, learn these tools on your own time, You know, get better at these tools, it's always good to sharpen the sword, but you don't need fancy tools to wireframe. If you can draw and sketch and you got a piece of paper handy, then you can wireframe. For your lo-fi wireframes, you got a notebook, notepads, pen and paper, or you've got your iPad that you can use, or you can use Envision app on your desktop to create lo-fi wireframes. And that's good enough if you're working on your own projects. Now, if you are 
creating something that's more uh, you want to be able to present to a client or a partner or a, you know a team, then go for the Hi-Fi wireframes uh, and use Figma or Adobe XD or Sketch. And you can even use components that are pre-designed so that you can hurry up and get the job done. So hopefully that was a valuable lesson for you on wireframing, planning out your site. You know, in our previous video, we learned how to plan the site, site map, create your goal. And this video is all about wireframing, lo-fi and hi-fi. And we had a whole bunch of fun doing it. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, click that like button. That tells YouTube that you like me and that's a good thing for you and for the rest of the design and development community. So once again, thank you. My name is Brad Hussey and I will catch you in the next video. Cheers. That was a weird ending.